guys are in the, you got, you know where you're at, right? You are in the cargo area. Yeah! Hence the word cargo. You're not cargo. You're my viewers. You're supposed to be in the front seat, in the passenger seat, in the cat. Every time you do this, you know I get in trouble. Every single time. You, uh, you guys are impossible. Uh, here, just, okay, okay, all right, don't, don't get sad. Don't start crying. Okay, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll move you, hang on, hang on. Hey, I'm Wes. Welcome back to the vlog. Welcome to the gear set and welcome back to Alabama. <laughs> I'm standing here with you with the 2020 Toyota RAV4 Hybrid all-wheel drive and we'll take a deep dive into this to find out exactly why it should be on your list of new vehicles for 2020. Starting with the exterior, we're going to start with the front of this vehicle. Uh, the front is a new design as of 2019 uh, and I think it, they've done a very nice job of bringing this into the Toyota family as compared to the way it was before. It kind of looked like it was the Outlander, if you will. It was, a, it was an outcast from the family. Now it has a front end that's really similar to the design of the Tacoma and the 4Runner. So it brings it into the family. The one thing I really don't like about this, especially on this particular model, is this great grill. I love the insert. I like the shape, the design, everything about it, except the fact that it's gray. There's nothing else on the exterior of this car that's gray. So if this was a black, like a gloss, uh, metallic black, like some of the other accents on the exterior, this would be a much better addition to the front end. In terms of lighting, you do have LED headlights up front. One thing I'm a little disappointed at is the fact that it does not have LED turn signals up front. Since it's 2020, you would think that everything would have LED all around on four corners for all the lights, but that's not the case. It does have your standard incandescent bulbs for the turn signals. Toyota went on ahead and put black wheels on the RAV4. They're 18s and they're on 225.60s. Uh, Michelins. Uh, they ride really nice. They look very nice. I think that black contrast with the blue paint and these other black accents rounds it out really, really nicely. Looking along the side of the RAV4, you would notice it has a little bit of an edgier design. Uh, it's not soft. It's not really subtle. It's here to make a statement. Uh, much better than the previous versions of this of this vehicle other, in other years. You notice the hybrid emblem and the all-wheel drive emblems. They are in chrome. They're not black or subdued like the rest of the car. It's very easy to complain about this, but especially in this color paint, if you had a black emblem, it'd be rather difficult to actually see it. It wouldn't stand out as much as it does if it's chrome. One thing to note that I'm a little disappointed about are the mirrors. Yes, it does have mirrors. By law, it has to for safety reasons, but with all the features that are included in this car, you would think that they would have power folding mirrors, but they're not. They are 100% manual. So if you need to fold them in for parking or car wash, that's something that you manually have to do instead of just pressing a button on the inside. On the rear of the RAV4, you do have LED brake lights and tail lights, and you also see the common trend of the chrome badging back here as well. As you would guess, it does have a power folding tailgate. It will lift that. Hopefully I don't get hit in the head with the thing as it there we go, just to make sure. Plenty of storage in the back for uh, cargo. Don't put your kids back here, but there's plenty of room for cargo uh, storage. You'll find the JBL subwoofer in the back. When it's time to close the tailgate, you have two options. You can use the remote or just one touch. One touch and it comes down. The design of the taillights to me, really clean, elegant looking. Uh, modern. I think it's exactly where it's supposed to be with some LED lighting. Also in the rear, you can't tell, there's a camera right here, right underneath the third brake light. And it's not the backup camera. The backup camera is located here. We'll get into what this second camera right here is for once we start talking about the interior. Now we are inside of the 2020 Toyota RAV4. And once you sit inside, you will notice that it's pleasantly comfortable. The seats are comfortable. They hug you just enough in just the right places. 
everything is really easily in reach and there are no unnecessary buttons and unnecessary button pushing in order to get to certain things that you want to get to the heated seats are right here at the touch of a button there are no menus here to go turn them on and off your climate control buttons are all centrally located you don't have to go through the radio everything is all here and it has its own dedicated button for the most part the steering wheel is very ergonomic steering wheel controls are laid out very nicely they may take a little getting used to depending on what cap what type of vehicle you came from prior to this one but everything here is well placed and it even has a wireless charging pad the toyota line has been the first brand that i've seen that actually has this integrated into it and i think that's a really nice touch there's a lot of storage here which is really really cool for the passengers to put phones or or uh whatever else you may need to put in here ink pens things like that uh the infotainment system is standard toyota infotainment this year they've upgraded it now you have apple and android auto built into it if you have a usb uh, cable and a compatible android or apple phone for those aficionados that still want the manual feel without the clutch burning and all the other do high and, and dilly dallies with the manual transmission it does have a sport mode this vehicle is equipped with a cvt transmission however it does give it a sporty type feel if you will without having an actual transmission for those who have driven cvt transmissions in manuals or sport mode uh, you know exactly what i'm talking about all right so just as promised I'm going to tell you exactly what that second rear view camera is for. Most of the cars on the market today, if someone has their bright lights on there behind you, you can easily just reach up here, flip a lever, and it will slightly angle your rear view mirror down or up since that technology has been around for years. Auto manufacturers have developed auto dimming mirrors. Once they sense light that's too bright in the mirror, they will start to dim a little bit. This car, if you pull this lever, it activates that rear camera. Now your rear view mirror becomes a display for the camera instead of an actual reflective surface. It's a really cool feature and I really hope that a lot more manufacturers are starting to incorporate that into their new vehicles. One of my other favorite features of the interior of this car has nothing to do with electronics, nothing to do with comfort. It's actually the black headliner. For those of you that are freakishly tall like myself, the back seat is actually doable. So I stand at, I'm 6'3", so I'm not freakishly tall, I'm not too tall. I like to think I'm a little taller than average, at least a little taller than average. That's what my mom told me. Anyway, the driver's seat is positioned for me to drive. And I'm 6'3", so of course it's all the way back, it's reclined a little bit, and legroom in the front seat, set like it is, is perfect for me. Back seat, behind this driver's seat, I still have room. Armrest, we have armrest, two cup holders here. And the seats do fold down, so if you need to store something larger than the back area, you can flip this down and it allows you plenty of uh, additional storage for all of your longer items. How about we go for a drive? So now we're all set to take this 2020 RAV4 out for a drive. Uh, we're gonna so, go ahead and get this thing started and hit the road and I'll let you know what I think. Oh, wait a minute. It's not running. Oh, that's right. It's a hybrid. Don't expect engines to always start as soon as you press the start button on a hybrid. Most of the time, you're just being nothing but battery mode. As of right now, we're in battery mode. It's really, really quiet in here, if you can't tell. So we're going to go start driving and uh, see what we get. One thing to note with this car is that it has 
it has what I like to consider or what I like to think of as adaptive power steering. And what I mean is at low speeds, when you're in parking lots, the steering wheel is very, very easy to turn. Minimal effort to turn this vehicle. But once you start cruising a little faster, you're getting up to highway speeds, maybe 40, 50 mile an hour. Uh, what you'll notice is that the steering becomes a lot tighter. It becomes more responsive. It has more of a sport like feel to it. I'm not going to say it feels like you're driving a Ferrari, but it definitely has a tighter steering feel than driving a slow around a parking lot. Because right now it takes very little or to no effort to actually turn around these turns. Road noise is very minimal. The car is extremely smooth. For an SUV, this has to be one of the smoothest SUVs I've ever driven. The transition from battery power to engine power is almost seamless. You can barely tell. It's just so you just feel a light, very light vibration when the engine actually starts. But then other than that, it's back to being very, very smooth again. All right, so once we get out here onto this main road, we're gonna give it some gas. We're gonna get it out of electric vehicle mode uh, and we're gonna get into power mode. There's a gauge on the on the dashboard that reads from char off charge, eco and power. And we're gonna get it out of the eco mode into power. So, here we go. I don't know if you could tell, but I could barely tell that we are now in gasoline power mode. This vehicle, if you went to Toyota and wanted to buy it, the MSRP sticker price runs right around $37,000. For an SUV that gets you 41 miles per gallon in the city, that's not bad at all. That's really not that bad at all, especially when you consider all of the safety features that come standard on this car. The rear view mirror being digital, being one, you get your rear cross traffic uh, alert. You have the auto braking, all the standard Toyota safety suite that you get on every vehicle. You get it here, still at $37,000. You get all-wheel drive. You get leather seats. You get the infotainment system. You get all that included in the price for $37,000. You get the moonroof. I mean, it's, it's really what more could you want for $37,000? I hope you guys enjoyed the video review of the 2020 Toyota RAV4. Overall, I think it's an excellent vehicle. If you are in the market for an SUV, this should 100% be on your list. And at a tested price of $37,000, just over $37,000, it is loaded full of features.